Good afternoon, everyone. So we're going to start this first Cobra Comp online event. This afternoon, we are going to talk about gradient reinforcements for high performance composite materials. So I'm Nicolas Martin from Euro Materials. And this first Cobra Comp online event is in the framework of the Interreg Northwest Europe project, Cobra Comp. Ready textiles to improve the competitiveness of composite materials industry in Northwest Europe. This afternoon, we'll have three uh, presentations or so three talks. Uh, we'll first have a presentation by Stefan Voskamp from Eurocarbon. He's going to introduce uh, braiding technology. Then we have a presentation by Pascal Amat from Collins Aerospace Ratifi Jack. He's going to talk about braiding for composites, turbopropeller blades. And finally, we have a general presentation of the Cobra Comb project. So to let you know a bit more about what we are going to do in the next years, uh, the work plan and the, the timeline. So by Euro Materials. And if you have uh, questions, uh, we have a question session at the end of the webinar. So you can type your questions in the in the chat. So a chat message and we'll gather all the questions and try to to answer at the end of the, web of the webinar. So now we'll have the first presentation by Stefan Voskamp from Eurocarbon. He's going to talk about braiding technology and braiding machines. Thank you very much, uh, Nicola, for the introduction. Uh, my name is Stefan Voskamp, general manager of uh, Eurocarbon. And in this presentation, uh, I will show you the outline. Uh, first, we, I will introduce uh, our, our company. Uh, there are probably some people which are unknown to the braiding technology and its architecture, uh, overbraiding, and also the specific uh, new novelty about uh, the Cobra Comp architecture examples of triaxial components uh, already in the market and also examples of uh, state-of-the-art uh, overbraiders. A short introduction of Eurocarbon founded in 1982. Uh, at that time carbon fiber was a, a quite a new material and Eurocarbon was founded to, to produce braids and also woven tapes with this, uh, these materials primarily for the composite industry. And since 94, we started uh, developing the overbraiding technique. I will come to that uh, later in, in the presentation. Uh, it's an automated way of uh, producing your preforms. With that, we had several successes, uh, for especially for automotive industry, where the technology was uh, recognized to be efficient, repeatable, and all the benefits I will show you uh, later. These magnificent uh, cars we uh, we could um, give our contribution to with uh, the braiding technology. But what we find uh, most cases when we introduce the, the braiding technology is that in this example, this engineer has uh, something on his to-do list from his boss. Uh, he has to produce composite beams or tubes. And for that, he will look in his trick box with known technologies. This could be fabrics, filament winding, fiber placements. But most of the times, overbraiding uh, is uh, not, not uh, un it's unknown. And if you don't know it, you don't uh, use it. You will get the job done, but we need to question ourselves if uh, the method you're using is uh, the, the best one to use. Also, overbraiding is not a solution for every component, but there are certainly several components uh, which uh, are very good candidates. Uh, if we go back to the origin of braiding, the first traces of braiding to make cords or laces for corsets, uh, as an example, uh, is in 1653. I don't know what's happening. It's in 1653, uh, written uh, in a book by Philips Harsdorfer, and it's invented in uh, Utrecht. Uh, that is uh, the source of uh, the German Wikipedia. 
The first patent has been on the, the braiding machine in 1748. So by now all the these patents are expired, but it has found its way into the composite industry and new inventions uh, are being made, such as uh, the, the Cobra Comp architecture. So if I explain the braiding system for the people who are unknown uh, to it, let's say we have a, a braiding machine with 144 spools or carriers, we call them. 72 of them are moving clockwise and 72 of them are moving counterclockwise. This can be better seen in this uh, video. Here we can see the, the carriers following each other. Each other. You can see uh, it's they are being passed from one horn gear to the other. So if you follow, if you focus on one carrier, you can see the, the motion. This is uh, the braiding at a normal speed. This position, this uh, tube is a very important tube to introduce a third uh, axle, the UD fiber. By doing that, the UD fiber is represented in the green color. Uh, we can embed this fiber in between the plus and the minus yarn. The plus and the minus yarns, they are spiraling around uh, the component and providing torsion stiffness, and the UD fibers are providing the bending stiffness. So if we look at the ratio, it's one fiber, UD, one a plus fiber and one minus fiber. So in total, the ratio is two braiding yarns relative to one UD fiber. Um, Triaxial braids, this is the combination of these three axes. Uh, as mentioned before, UD is effective in bending and compression. Uh, we can play with the ratios, the, the fiber amount in braiding, but also in relation to the UD fiber. So it could be 95 to 5 or the other way around. Uh, UD fibers, they are used with large spools, so they are very cost efficient. Uh, we had the BMW i8 production with very large spools, so the, the time to replace them in the number of products, uh, it's the ratio is good. We have uh, the freedom to put UD fibers where we want them. Uh, in this case, uh, this is a, a beam being overbraided, is subjected to bending loads, and we could choose to put in more fibers at the top and the bottom where they are more effective in, in the bending loads. As mentioned before, the ratio is uh, two to one. Here's an example of a braid um, with a high UD content. On the picture on the right, you can see the UD fibers. They're being held by the plus and the minus yarns. In this case, it's 84% of UD fiber. And this is uh, the video how it's uh, being put on. So in this case, the overbraiding process is more used as a, a UD deposition machine and it's maintained on the core where it's uh, braided uh, onto. So here's another video of an overbraiding process, uh, not with a straight uh, part, but with a, a curved uh, beams. Compared to uh, fabrics, we can, uh, during braiding, we can change uh, the braiding angle according to the, the CNC program and therefore it's very repeatable. And we can integrate the UD fibers into uh, one layer. So you have bending and torsion into uh, one layer. Uh, compared to fabrics, we, uh, we have, uh, don't have an overlap uh, on no creasings or buckling by folding. And uh, the, the UD fiber and the braid is uh, following the core in a very organic uh, way. We call this a, a kind of additive manufacturing technology as the, the, the waste is at the beginning and at the end. And the, the longer the part, the, the less uh, waste uh, there is. Typically, it's uh, below 10%. Uh, Compared to fabrics, it can be a, a lot uh, higher. So with overbraiding, the fibers are directly placed onto the core, lower than 10%. Uh, uh, waste uh, rates because of the direct uh, fiber placement. Uh, in the showcase later on, 
Uh, the technology has uh, proven to have excellent crash properties. The SLR, SLR crash cone is a very good example for this. High degree of automation. We have several uh, SERI components uh, in the past and currently running for a large series. High deposition rate, depending on your fiber choice and your fiber architecture, you can put in a lot of uh, fibers in a short notice. If you compare it to filament winding, uh, we can uh, 444 carrier uh, with UD fibers, you're talking about 216 uh, yarns uh, at, uh, at, at one sequence. Uh, used for load bearing applications and also complex shapes are possible. Below you can see the, the rocker of the Lamborghini Aventador with a, a, a concave uh, section inside. So the new architecture for Cobra Comp, uh, the architecture is an invention of Mr. George Kauzak. If we compare this uh, with a normal architecture, so we stack three layers of the existing triaxial braids with a small uh, offset. You see that there's a nesting effect uh, during braiding. And if you look at uh, the red box, there are three yarns of UD in this uh, selected region, but we need to apply three layers of, uh, of braids to, to manage that. With the new architecture, uh, there are two uh, rings combined together, and this gives the opportunity to, to feed in an extra UD fiber. So if we look at the architecture at the picture here below, you can see it's through the thickness. We have a UD fiber here, and we also have a UD position here. But to match the thickness of the fiber in the top and the bottom, there are two ends inserted at this position to provide equal thickness. So for normal braiding at this section, there could be, there's only two fibers in this case, and on this section, with three fibers. In this architecture, is more uh, homogeneous. And the benefit is that you have the potential of feeding a lot more UD fibers in one uh, over braiding sequence. So therefore, uh, parts which are subjected to bending loads, they are the ultimate candidates uh, for this uh, architecture, also crash uh, architectures. You can imagine a, a spar or uh, any uh, beam life structure uh, for, for automotive. These uh, could be very good uh, candidates. So the benefit instead of three times passing through the machine, uh, replaced by one single pass to, to provide the same uh, number uh, of your uh, UD fibers. So that's a, a big uh, gain in, uh, in efficiency. So this is another representation uh, made by NSET uh, of the how the architecture looked like also through the thickness. You can see there's a, a double fiber inserted relative to, to the blue uh, yarns. So some examples. Uh, this is a good demonstrator of the, the crash resistance. The triaxial architecture makes sure that uh, it has a good ar architecture for continuous delamination and absorbing a lot of energy. The UD fibers there are held upright by the plus and the minus yarns. And this small undulation here at this point will give a small weak spot. It will stop crack propagation, but if you continue to feed in more energy, like in the crash application, it will continue the, the delamination and uh, try to stop this uh, effect. Lamborghini, the Aventador, the A-pillar support bracket and the rocker, both are triaxially braided, uh, heavy loaded components. You can imagine if the car rolls over, these parts uh, are subjected to a significant amount of stress. Triaxial braiding for the BMW i8. This is former production. So the, 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 the door frame, this is holding up the whole door. The rockers <clears throat> made out of two parts and the A-pillar. All done also by triaxial braiding <clears throat> with a rather large uh, UD content. In 2002, <clears throat> we started building braiding machines um, for own use, but now and then also for, for uh, other companies. 
And here's a, a range of machines we have built in the past. You can see machines like Fokker for Fokker landing gear and NLR or the National Composite Center. It's made out of two rings uh, which are not connected to each other. But in this case, to produce the, the architecture, it is, uh, is the case. I'm giving now the word uh, to Pascal uh, Amat for this uh, presentation for Collins uh, Aerospace. Thank you. Thank you, Stefan. So we're going to talk about the braiding process applied for tube for blade. In the scope of Cobra Comp, Cobra Comp for composite braid competitiveness. Uh, in this presentation, we'll have a short presentation of Rachi Fijak. Some word about blade history. So why braiding process apply to turbo pro blade? A presentation of our braiding machine. And so why traxial braid and why Cobra Comp project? So Rachi Fijak is a part of Collins Aerospace in the group Rayson Technology, including uh, Pratt Whitney, Rayson Missile and Defense, Rayson Intelligence in Space. So Rachi Fijak, it is not only uh, propellers, it is also uh, what we call THSA for trimable horizontal stabilizer actuator, so ball screw actuator. It is also uh, helicopter parts safety part, and it is also cockpit and cabin equipment like truss control, side stick, rudder pedals, doors dampers. So some word about the blade history. So Rati Fischak is uh, more than 100 years of experience in uh, developing, manufacturing, and uh, repair of propeller blade. Uh, we have a strong position in both uh, military and commercial market. Uh, our main customer are ETR for commercial aircraft, for example. And for uh, military aircraft, this is uh, Airbus military and also US Navy. Um, progressively, the number of blades increased until uh, eight. Uh, the power range, the propeller power increased until uh, 11,000 horsepower. And uh, we can say we produce an uh, average uh, 2,500 uh, blade per year. So initially, uh, blades were in wood, as you can see in the picture, then in aluminium, and progressively uh, in composite using uh, pre impregnated first. So, transal application was in 1988. Of course, the advantage of composite versus aluminium is uh, for the weight. Uh, the weight was uh, divided by two, so it's a very big advantage because the, the blade weight is, uh, the, the blade are uh, centrifuged, so it's uh, very interesting for the total uh, weight of the propellers. Uh, other advantages were fatigue strength, damage tolerance improvement, also the burn impact and the corrosion strengths were improved significantly. And so, uh, why braiding process? So, in 1992, uh, the braiding process is associated to the resin transfer molding so to, to reduce the cost and uh, the lead time manufacturing. And also to improve the, the quality uh, using a more reputable process. You can say that the braiding process is uh, similar to what is it. And we've got uh, here some example of application of the braiding process that is used for the ATR propeller, for instance, with six blade diameter of uh, four meters. On the right, you've got the A400M, the foreign, foreign chain of eight blade per propellers and diameter of 5.3 meters. So this is a, a typical uh, design of a, a braided blade. You've got a continuity of fibers in leading and training age. In yellow, you've got the spar form, which is used as mandrel, it's a lightweight core. And so the, the carbon spar is braided around this spar form. So the, the main specificity of the carbon spar are the, the complex shape, which include a twist and sweep. This is also very, very flat toward the tip. 
there is significant perimeter and thickness variation. As I show uh, sharp ready in leading and training age. And the, the layup must include uh, yes fibers, but also unidirectional fibers. Um, so the, the carbon spar is a, the primary structure of, uh, of the blade. Uh, mm -hmm. The spar is designed for 500 million fatigue cycle. Uh, we had uh, the, the layup of the carbon spar is designed to, to avoid any, any crossing uh, of the natural frequency of the bait uh, with uh, the engine excitation and the harmonic. So you must have an accurate frequency placement. So braiding facility at Rache, so we've got 288 and 144 carriers braiding machine. So the picture show uh, the 288 carriers braiding machine. So she's used for a high pole blade. It's a very big wheel, uh, 5.8 meters diameter, so very important. Um, you can see the carbon spar it can be manipulated using a robot with uh, six degrees of freedom. So one additional degree of freedom is translation to get the, the bundle motion inside the gateway. And so we need uh, two braiding machines, so one for the BAS fibers and one for the unidirectional fiber. So why tracks are braided and why Cobra Composite? So to use only one braiding machine instead of two for unidirectional and these fibers. Also to study the innovative tracks are braid from George with uh, thanks to additional uh, UD yarn inside of the architecture. The surface distribution is, is more homogeneous with less waveness. Uh, also, um, we should have higher fiber volume fraction, so leading to higher mechanical properties. Uh, we've got the opportunity to reduce the braiding cycle. Uh, there is also a work package in Cobracom project regarding a numerical tool for braiding simulation. Uh, so it um, could uh, improve the, the braid and thickness prediction for complex shape. And to finish, I would say that uh, got also the opportunity to improve the automation, the braiding process, thanks to both track cell braid and, and also back and forth braiding. So uh, thanks for your attention. Thank you, Pascal. So I'm going to continue with uh, the general presentation of, uh, of the Cobra Comb project. Um, you had a nice introduction uh, of the project by uh, Stefan and and Pascal. They uh, they gave insights of what we we are going to do in in, in the project. So um, I will talk about um, your material. Just a, um, a brief uh, introduction of uh, who we are, Cobra Comp in brief. Uh, then the Northwest Europe program uh, that uh, gave that gave us subsidies for the project. The partnership, the work plan, uh, our timeline, and uh, you see that we have uh, events to come, uh, hopefully uh, at the end of, of the year, uh, COVID dependent. And then if you want to know more, the, the, the contacts. So Euro Materials, how we are, we are the cluster of uh, materials processing industries. Uh, we are a French uh, competitiveness cluster. We are located in Tourcoing near Lille in the north of France. And basically uh, our job is to foster innovation, support innovation between our members in the materials processing industries. So we have members uh, from academia, from technical centers, from industry. And we are helping them to, to innovate through uh, innovate innovation projects. And we also have um, a business incubator uh, to support uh, young, young companies. The Cobra Comp, uh, in brief, uh, as you could see, uh, we are developing a new uh, manufacturing process for braiding. For that, we have a nice cooperation uh, at Northwest Europe scale of key leaders in the composite materials value chain. We have people from academia, industry, also clusters. So we started the project in 2019. And we were uh, a bit slowed down by the COVID as, as many uh, European projects. 
but uh, we, we expect to finish uh, the project by 2023, completing all the tasks, hopefully. Uh, and received, we received um, validated subsidies uh, from the European Union. So two millions, a bit more than two millions for the, the whole project. So we have many objectives. Uh, it's a new process, so we will develop new braiding machines. We have to test the materials from these new processes at coupon scale. Also, we are developing numerical simulation tools to predict braid geometry and mechanical properties. And we also want to demonstrate the technology with technological demonstrators. And there is also um, a wish to disseminate the project results with workshops, webinars like today. And we also want to uh, create a community dedicated to braided composites. So uh, after the project uh, end, uh, we will keep this momentum uh, with this community. Yes. Yes. If you've had a brainwave for something that might make Northwest Europe a better place to work and live, then Interreg Northwest Europe could provide the backing that will bring your project to life. This part of Europe is a place of surprising disparities. On the one hand, it is home to an impressive number of places with outstanding economic performance and growth. But it also includes remote and rural areas that in some ways lag behind. At Northwest Europe, our mission is to try and reduce those disparities, making the whole region more prosperous and cohesive. We're looking for projects that can deliver concrete, measurable results for the area. There'll be benefits for you too. You'll be able to hook into an international network of like-minded professionals. And taking your project transnational could give it the critical mass and economies of scale it needs. Plus all the time and money savings of sharing resources and experience. The exact formula for your project is up to you and your partners. It could be a product, a technology, or a process. But we are looking for ideas with at least three partners from three different countries and the focus on one of our three priorities. Helping enterprises to innovate and deliver societal benefits. Supporting the move to a low carbon economy in every sector. And finding new ways to produce more value with fewer materials. If your idea could make one of these goals a reality, you should be getting in touch. Interreg Northwest Europe, because many heads are better than one. So thanks for watching. Um, you will have new calls on this uh, Interreg Northwest Europe program. Uh, so between 2021 and 2027. Uh, so that's basically the same uh, format, but they just uh, removed the uh, UK uh which is not in the in the program anymore so our partnership so who's in the who's in that project we have first of all uh people from um industry so we have uh, the industry value chain um so experts of uh, composite materials in particular uh regarding braided composite materials so we have eurocarbon uh co-expert that is working on the manufacturing of composites with uh, RTM equipments. We have also people from academia and technology centers. So we have University of Twente in the Netherlands, uh, Ancet in, uh, in France, and also Santex Bell in, uh, in Belgium. We have also uh, on board uh, clusters and industry uh, federations, so Euromaterials and Agoria. So uh, it would help to communicate and disseminate. Uh, so make sure that all the, the stakeholders are aware of the project as it's a, a new technology. And we have also associated partners. So they would help to, to communicate and relay communication also to their, uh, their own network. So we have Clubtex and France Skywin in Belgium. Composite NL in the Netherlands, Pedestria in Belgium, and UCA, which is based in uh, Belgium, but is the European Composite Industry Association. So our work plan, 
what we are doing in the project. So we have three um, basics, work packages, management, communication, long-term effects. But I will talk a bit more about the implementation work packages. So we are developing and testing a new technology. We need to validate this new technology with demonstrators. And we want also to disseminate um, to enterprises or also universities. So talk about this, uh, this new technology. So it's a new braiding process. Uh, we have to design uh, and engineer a new, a new machine. And also, as it was explained by um, Pascal, we are also working on numerical tools. So for the processing and also for materials um, properties prediction. And we have to test those materials, so process and test at uh, coupon scale. So that will uh, give us uh, composite materials properties. We have the technology demonstrator. So we have to design and engineer also this demonstrator, manufacture the preform, RTM processing, and the testing of demonstrator so that we can get the, the performance uh, on the composite part. And the last part, so that's the showcase of the technology. We will um, do some small case study uh, analysis, and um, we would like to organize workshops, open days to support enterprises. So we expect to organize those um, workshops by the end of this year. Uh, so I hope in September or October and next year, 2022, and also uh, until mid 2023. So that would depend on the COVID situation, but I think it's getting better and better. And uh, with uh, all those contacts, we would like to create a community uh, dedicated to ready composites so that uh, we can um, foster a project results rollout and uptake by all the, the stakeholders. So our timeline, so it's uh, COVID dependent. We have a lot of things to do until the, the end of the project. Uh, so basically, uh, in the work package one, we are still working on braiding machines, coupon testing, and also working on models to simulate the geometry and properties of the, the architecture and also composite. We have this big work package uh, on validation of the technology with the demonstrator. Uh, so we need to design, engineer, manufacture, and also test the demonstrator. And then we have this third, we have this third work package. So what's interesting for you, um, stakeholders of the composite value chain, I think, um, which is interesting, is the the eight workshops that we want to organize at partners' location. Uh, so we we expect workshops in France. Uh, Belgium in the Netherlands as soon as COVID and travel restrictions allow it. So as I said, uh, probably during the uh, the last uh, quarter of 2021. If you want to know more about uh, Cobra Comp, as it was a very quick introduction, uh, a lot of uh, details and information, so you can visit our website uh northwesteurope.eu uh, slash cobracomp we also have a linkedin account so you can follow us or you can uh, contact also project partners feel free to to contact the partnership if you have questions uh, also you have um, the opportunity to answer a poll uh, at the end of the meeting So now we have the, the question session. So I invite all the, the partners to, uh, to switch on their, their cameras and we can answer questions from the, the attendees. Thank you very much.